Dr Gary Sidley. He's a retired NHS consultant, clinical psychologist, and joins us now. Good morning to you, Gary. Good morning, Julia. Um, you've, uh, you're, being, you're part of the, uh, the HEART uh, organisation of uh, medics and professionals and scientists and others who are concerned about, uh, obviously, lockdown policy and various other policies that have been used to uh, tackle this pandemic. And uh, you've written in the past about uh, the, the psychological effects of masks. Um, and there is no doubt at all there is a big psychological effect and a lot of psychological damage done from masks. And, and as we know now, and this is extraordinary, because I saw a BBC report on, on this, uh, this report on uh, the quality of face masks that are wearing. Basically, the cloth face mask a lot of us wear, the the, the blue turquoise, you know, um, uh, disposable ones most people wear, really serve virtually no purpose whatsoever, this report has shown, in healthcare settings. And it's only if you've got a proper high-grade mask that makes any difference. In which case, why are we all being told to wear masks? Well, that's a good question. Um, the evidence for wearing masks in the community by healthy people is at best weak and contradictory. And all the more robust evidence with uh, controlled randomized trials concludes that they do not make any significant difference to viral transmission for the wearer or indeed for other people. So, so yes, I, I guess this confirms what we've always thought, doesn't it? That um, wearing masks, cloth masks and kind of low standard masks in the community was never really going to be a benefit. I think the other thing, Julia, we need to uh, highlight here, though, is when we talk about these high-grade FFP3 masks that seem to benefit um, healthcare staff, but they are dealing with a very different population of people, aren't they, than you know, the Mr. Average person in the street. So they're dealing with you know, sick, COVID-19 diagnosed, symptomatic individuals who are probably, for the most part, highly infectious, whereas you know, wearing masks on asymptomatic, healthy people in the community is a totally different environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so, yes, I, I, I think uh, this observation, and it's a small scale study, the one yeah. in the hospital in Cambridge, so we shouldn't perhaps uh, put too much emphasis on it just well, no. yet. But, but, but it does but tell us true. something, that the staff caring for patients on red wards, i.e. those with, with COVID, uh, faced a risk that was up to 47 times those on green or non-COVID wards. And what they discovered was when they actually gave them these these FFP3 respirators, um, they, they had uh, up to 100%, the close to 100% protection against infection from patients. Uh, very different from the, the, the you know, that, well, basically up to 47 times higher risk uh, for those uh, who who otherwise didn't have it. This is the key thing, though, because this study makes it really clear that, that these these masks, these surgical masks that everyone's been told, oh, these are the things that keep you safe on the street, in the supermarket, on the on, on the bus, in the, on the train. They are fluid resistant, but they're loose fitting and they're not meant, they are literally not designed to screen out infectious aerosols. And if you actually saw the, the boxes they come in, they will say these are not going to protect you from COVID. And yet we've been legally required to wear them. There's a lot of hope that the masks are going to be ditched as a mandatory requirement on July the 19th. But um, a lot of us, I mean, I, I didn't fight against masks coming in last summer. Um, I didn't ever think they needed to be mandatory, but I was sort of like, oh, well, you know, if it reassures people and then they come out and we get back to normal life, that's a good thing. They had, I would say, the opposite effect they've done the opposite of reassuring haven't they totally agree yes and that's what our smile free campaign is around i don't know whether you've heard of our mm. smile free yep. campaign at smilefree.org but it's to try and get all the mass mandates lifted as soon as possible and for them to to never return and yes you no know, wearing these kind of low quality masks in the community was never going to do any good it was brought in at a time when there was um, no change in the evidential uh, stuff mm. out there so one can only assume and it was brought in more to try and promote compliance with the restrictions generally yeah. and they don't reassure julia you know i hear this you know people say oh so will it reassure people masks scream don't they that there is danger all around us yes. they, they perpetuate fear and, and and more subtly this is what i tried to get across recently is, is that they can act as a safety behavior that keeps fear going so in other words, very quickly, if anybody puts themselves into uh, a, a situation that they fear, so in this case means returning to normality, they mix for two weeks with their fellow human beings and if all goes well, they come out of that and go, hmm, maybe my environment is safe enough, I can get back into normal life. Yeah. Wear a mask, that's a safety behaviour. So what tends to happen is you attribute your survival to the mask rather yes. than to a reduction in risk 
I, yeah, so it's, it's 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 wrong on so many different yeah. levels. Oh, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more, Dr. Gary Sidley. I hope to speak to you again. We've got longer time. A retired NHS consultant, clinical psychologist. Thank you so much.